Yo, what up to another episode of Black Nerd Fridays, a podcast with three black nerds that come up and talk about everything nerdy, whether it's animated, written, or live action. And of course, we pair everything with beer. Today, I got my lovely co-host. Everybody showed up on time this time because you know why? It is Kinky Suds, a.k.a. on a cosp- on a budget cosplay queen's birthday. So they had birthday. to come correct. It's your birthday. Oh, it's your birthday. <laughs> correct for my birthday. But like I said, you know, I got my co-host on here with me today. First up, Mr. Refine himself. Go Yo. ahead and tell me. How you doing today and what are you drinking? I am good. It's Friday. I knocked out what I needed to knock out as far as on that grill. And I'm just going to get right to this beer I got. And yes. I got two. So I'm going to start Ooh. with this. This is Jim and I by Mortalis. It is a raspberry sweet cherry and lime. And I love cherry and I love lime. So this is going to mm. be fire. And I needed nice. something like this to get to something tropical after that toxic waste we had all last week. You know what I mean? With with, with what's going on in that Tokyo Ghost. So I needed that. Ooh, and it's right here from um, Foam Brewers. This is a trip around the sun. It's a double o IPA. It's a 10 percent. And uh, again, we needed some sunlight and you don't get sunlight unless you go to the. Uh, the uh, sanctuary out there in Tokyo. So I'm Tokyo. We go. What are you talking about man. Shout out Tokyo for real. All right, and then we got ourselves the pod king, podcast king himself. Tell so me how you're doing today, and what are you shout out, drinking? Shout out Brick, shout out Lupita for always hopping on. You know, I knew Lupita always. for a long time, ever since middle school. This is this is a this is this is a ride or die homie right there. You know, we ain't talked in a minute, but she always trying to show up for sets, so it's all love. Um, <laughs> man, I had to do it. You know what I mean? If you don't know now, you will know October second. Yes, Pro Oak Park Club. Brewing Company Jubilee. Your boy, I will be there. The man, mm. Steve Neal, will have his Ooh. first ever collaboration Ooh. beer with a brewery. Looking Ooh. forward to it. Uh, you know, just shout out. I got to let Brick know and everybody else know that it is as of yesterday before, before I mean, before the yeast, we were at about close to 13%. So we're, we're hoping it finishes off. So you're to trying to go higher than ABV hey. beer in Oak Park Brewing Company history. <laughs> trying to be the first, you know. <laughs> As long as I get above 12.5, I think we are, I'm a winner. But, you nice. know, since it's birthday, I had to do it. You know, it's Oak Park Takeover, Oak Park Brewing Company Takeover. Shout out to Oak Park. Uh, you know uh, I had to bring it, right? You know hey, I had to go get it. Hey. I had to go get the Scarlet. I had to bring it out. They had some left, so I said I got to go get it. Shout out Oak Park. This is, I'm telling you, 12.1 strong L is coming, is going down. And because, again, because it's Seth's birthday, I had to shout out and do it for the, the ladies. So shout out to... This one's for her, part two, her world. What up, what up, Brittany? This is a blueberry, lemon, and mint kettle sour. Definitely had to work on that mint, as Raj told me. So this, he said this is fire, but that logo is beautiful. All the women in that logo are women who have their own business. So shout out to the women who have their own business. I'm going to be real quick. on, And then this one right here. So I'm going to rotate this for you. This one's called the ABC. Yes. So art, <laughs> beer, and community. And so if you're looking, I'm going to just go ahead and zoom in because your boy right there. Oh, God, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. So I'm on there. This is a hazy IPA. I didn't even know Rod showed me yesterday. Man, yeah. that was a beautiful thing. So shout out to them, man. Shout out yes. to Oak Park Community as a part of their community. What up, Sacktown? And then last but not least, we got the Project Party. This Oak Park Brewing Company. This is a collaboration. Oh, yeah. That they did. This is their black pilsner. Definitely has a, a, a porter type feel to it, but definitely definitely liking uh, liking it. But shout out to the project party. I mean, the, to the yeah, to the project party. So I'm good. Oh, I'm gonna you have to my get my hands party. on that. So, you know, I always like to go with themes with my beer. So first off, I had to go with because I'm wearing rainbows. I got rainbow. Okay, look at that. Look at that. This is from Little Beaver Brewery, okay, out in Illinois. And this is a hazy pale ale, right, with citra, cascade, and mosaic hops. And on top of that, I want to say that this is probably going to be kind of like on the low end on the ABV, you know, just your standard little, you know, pale, hazy pale ale. But because my birthday is on what? September 10th. 
I had to go mm. find a beer that had the number 10 on it. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Now, this one here is celebrating 10 years. I said, nah, nah, we celebrating the 10th of September. Uh, <laughs> and this is an Imperial Cherry Stout. Okay. And this mm. is from a, a brewery out in Denver called Copper Kettle Brewing. I've never had any of their stuff. I'm really curious about it. But what I like about this, because I feel like this is like totally up my alley, it was aged in tequila and bourbon barrels. Mm. So you know this is about to be the first one I'm opening up for tonight. Okay. I like first it. I like one. it. First one. But before you know, you guys go ahead and open up. But what I want to do is show people what are we going to be talking about today. Today is this graphic novel that comes out of uh, Im uh, Image Comics. And it's called Tokyo Ghost. This is the first volume. The first volume covers five issues, which you see listed here. What I loved about this graphic novel is that it takes place in the future, uh, in the future of 2189. And people really are getting jacked up and plugged in. You know, there's a really dystopian type of future where people are just so detached from their emotions and from other people because they're just so dependent upon technology. And there's a lot of elements that go into the theme of the month, which is transhumanism, where people can kind of jack themselves up on a nanobot based serum called nanopacks. And this is where it can alter their appearance. It can alter their abilities. So it's really dark. I think there's some beautiful imagery to me. I think it, it pulled off of some uh, inspiration, which I'll talk a little bit about in my good, bad and ugly. But I do think that this was just a beautiful graphic novel. And I cannot wait to talk about this with you guys, because there's a lot of things about love, sex and drugs. And, you know, we grow so we could talk about all kinds of stuff on here. So without further ado, let's hop into our main segment that we always do. OK. And what is that, you guys? What is the good, bad, and the ugly? And I am going to start off with, ooh, let me get to that right. And I'm going to start off with Beer Talk Now. What What's is going your on? with this? Uh? Being here on the building. Um, <laughs> you know, shout out Brick, hi, ABV Life, what up with it? Uh, I'll see, uh, we're going to see each other soon. Uh, so the good, man, I just like the artwork. Uh, the, the whole concept was, it reminded me of that Bruce Willis movie where he was stuck in the pods. But and they had like pretty much like robots that would be outside. He was a detective, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, surrogates. Everybody, yeah, everybody was always like their everybody was their their avatar, which is this robot was always their younger selves, and they were literally mm -hmm. in the pods, either withering away or, or literally all withering away because they never left the pod. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> um, so this is what this reminds me of. Is Seth? Now you're just in the you're in a, you're literally just seeing TV ads and shows pop up on you every second. And there's like. That is like hundreds of shows that are going on all at once, uh, at least from the uh, one of the main characters that we saw. So I just love the artwork and just the whole concept, just that whole uh, humanity. If robots really took over everything and all the basic functions of what we do, what else will we have left? And I just love these type of um, these type of storylines where it's like humanity really just will not uh, go above and beyond what their what they think their only function is. They won't. They want to evolve to that next level. So that's, that's what that. I like. I love that. All right, Mr. Refine, what was your good with this? Um, My good was I love the animation on there. Excuse me, not the animation, the art. It was dope as hell. Definitely gave me vibes from like Cyborg uh, with Jean-Claude Van Damme, if you know what I'm talking about. Getting vibes of Blade Runner. And definitely more, most influential to me would be Wally. Um, that kind of lazy sitting back in a chair, you letting all the robots do the work for you, and the humans are just oblivious to everything around them. And I, I just absolutely loved it. The storyline was crazy good with the relationship between um, Dent and, and um, Debbie. So I just loved it all around. It was a very good uh, graphic novel, and now it's got me hooked. I got to read the rest of them. Right? Mm. It's one of those where you start reading, you're like, man, I got to finish reading the next couple of volumes. So for me, like you said, like you guys said, the 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 artwork was great. It was done by Sean Murphy, and the colors were met, uh, were pulled together by a Matt Hollingstonworth. Um, and I just think that the you could tell where they were drawing a lot of inspiration from, from like Blade Runner. And I think they also pulled a few elements to the story about from Akira that we have talked about. Um, and I just again, this whole dystopian future. It's always interesting to see how they always go. We're going into the future, we have more technology, but yet everything looks dirty, everything looks run down. People mm. are so detached, right? So sure we have advanced, but here we are getting into this type of future that just seems so bleak. So I really love the artwork they did. I think the scenes where they were having fight scenes, I think were really beautifully done. I mean, it was just it's just overall just great. And I also love the idea of how they were 
having so many different layers of things added in there with like love, with this whole idea of how do you address bullying and all these other types of things um, that I think just really comes out beautifully in that that whole story there. So I'm, I'm I, you know, honestly thought that it was just a beautiful piece of work. And I really look forward to seeing what they're going to do in the next volume, which I've heard that they've only done two volumes. So there's only 10 issues. So I, I'm shocked that they only went with 10 issues. But for my bad, my bad, I have to say, would definitely be, and we talk about this a little bit down uh, in some of the other questions, it's a lack of diversity. Uh, for me, I've noticed a lot of times when we get into future types of settings, we don't see a lot of diversity. I think the other thing, too, is just this idea that, you know, we become so dependent upon technology that we don't know how to break from it. And to me, I think that's kind of sad to see. Um, I, I wish that we would change the narrative a bit to show us actually being able to advance past that and not be so dependent upon technology. But we'll talk a little bit about that later. But for now, I'm going to go back to Mr. Fine and have him tell me what his bad is. Um, my bad would be I was a little bit disappointed with something that happened in the storyline with more of um, kind of once they got themselves in a, a peaceful place mentally and physically that they ended up having to separate and, and backtrack. And, you know, they they lost everything based upon something that happened in the past. And it just kind of pissed me off a little bit because I was actually looking forward to a happy end between Debbie and uh, Ellie yeah. Dent. Yeah, I was really, really hoping for a happy end. And it didn't happen because somebody else was trying to do payback from something that they originally initiated in the start. And I just oh, I'm yeah. pissed off by it. So, you know, that's oh, my I, bad on there. I can understand that. And yeah. D, what you got? Yeah, my, my, got? My bad is, uh, uh, is, is MASH's character. Um, <laughs> and uh, not just MASH's character, but how society as a whole was really MASH's character, uh, especially in the in the garden of, of tokyo uh yeah. tokyo japan that is yeah i just mash i just i just i i i, I uh, yeah he was just a character as i listened to his rationality uh for what happened and i love how uh ted aka led said you can't you can't you 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 made yourself the victim because you wanted someone to forgive what you did but in reality every action has a reaction and you can't control anybody's yes. action. So I love that interaction with them uh, yeah. where, where Led was at a different point, a little bit more peaceful point where he had to deal with his humanity, his emotions, his actions, everything. And I just think yeah. Master's character, it, it it really just showed, again, back to that societal thing of like where humanity, yep. where humanity is. It's like, I do you wrong, but I want you to forgive all of the, all my transgressions. Uh, yeah. And so no I can, so I can like feel that. better. Yeah, so I can feel better. Not not so you can heal the person that you did wrong because you didn't care. So MASH is the, my right. bad for that. True MASH. Okay. And so with that, building upon that, what would you say was your ugly? My ugly is uh, Debbie and, 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 and uh, Les' relationship. I mean, <laughs> yes. I, I mean them, them as characters, like, hands down. I mean, I know for the story, uh, but it was just a lot of, it was a lot of dumb actions that Debbie took uh especially dealing with the flank company or mr flank himself uh and i just really i really just kind of was like you knew that was going to happen he never was going to let things be the way it was and he really was relying on ted uh teddy our our, our lead and it was just mm -hmm. like yeah and even and even even led understanding the backstory of how he even became led um i was like yeah, bro. Like you, you, you had opportunity to get better, but really it was still uh, embarrassment and something that I think a lot of people go through with social media right now. Um, so I think that that was very Ooh. poignant, but just the step that he kept missing, which I think in Tokyo, he started to realize is that you have to, you, if you start off weak, you have to work to get strong. And that's something that led didn't do. Uh, and it and it really just numbed him from society because he wanted to show strength, but he couldn't even be himself within that strength. So that was my ugly. Oh, their relationship and them as characters, really. I love that man. Look at you getting all philosophical. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's your ugly, Mister Refine? Um, my ugly actually is 
just watching the reality of kind of what we go through right now with us being plugged into social media 24 7. Mm -hmm. um, we totally ignore, tune out with the beauty around us, whether it be your family, your friends, nature. We totally plug that out and ignore that and are more focused on how many likes I can get, how many followers, um, how many views what's popping, what's the most popular thing, what's trendy, and in turn, you end up missing everything around you that's more important. And they show that aspect through this whole, the whole um, novel, they pretty much show that. And I thought it's it was ugly because it's a reality that we deal with right now. We really go through these same things, even though we're not in that future that they did with the toxic waste. There's a lot of parallels that they're trying to show. So I just, you know, it hit home for me pretty much. I love that. And I'm going to keep mine short. I mean, honestly, my ugly with it is just the whole idea of addiction and just the sad story of seeing Dent kind of really just spiral out of control where he felt as though he wasn't strong enough. And he's like, he kept falling back on these old habits, right? It kept feeding into that chip he has on his shoulder that I've never been strong enough. So I know this makes me strong. This makes me where I'm impervious to any type of attacks. So I need to fall back on that because my girl is in is, is being attacked. I'm being attacked. Everything around me is crumbling. I need to go back to a safe space, a place where I feel in total control. And I think it really touches on this idea when you think about addiction in any type of way, how there's always a struggle and people are like, I don't understand why this person keeps doing it. I mean, it's the ugly side of it is that it's hard to break. So for me, I think that that was the thing. Like it was, it's, I think it shows the, the ugly truth. But at the same time, I just hate seeing that he just could not break out of that. I just, I just absolutely couldn't. I was like, man, I feel so bad for him. So that's real but, quick. Oh, okay. yeah, go ahead. No, just real quick. Someone asked, because I thought these were the novels, but maybe I'm incorrect. Because someone asked if we read the graphic novels. I'm like, I thought these were. Them, yeah. I thought so. Yeah, yeah, no. Him. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, no, that's I'm the person I'm... who I responded to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I was asking the people who are watching it. Have they ever, have they ever ah, heard of it? Have they read it? Me. I'm messing up. Well, Try to get interaction with the people. You know what I'm saying? I don't saying. know if you're messing up answering any questions for you. My bad, says My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So my thing is that, you know, the whole theme of this month is transhumanism, right? We talk about technology using, you know, using mm -hmm. technology to kind of enhance the human experience, right? And so we know these nano packs. I mean, clearly they do an amazing job with that, right? Because we know that Dent, when Debbie stabbed him in the very beginning of issue one, it was like she said, I think a month, a month supply of adrenaline, and like he goes into this like rage psychosis, and it's basically you could shoot him, you can stab him, and it doesn't even affect him. So my question to you guys is, if you had some type of technology that was a nano based serum, would you inject yourself with that? If like if if you could, if you didn't know what it was going to do to you, or if you knew what it was going to do to you, would you inject yourself with something like that? And I'm going to start with, I think I'm going to start with Mr. Refine on this one. I'm going to have him kick it off. I, that's a, a ugly question. Um, that's one of the things <laughs> we can have in high school doors because there's some parallels with that. But I will say this: no, I would not do that. Uh, one of the reasons is kind of what I was talking about earlier, picking back on what I said earlier. I like to deal with reality and what's going on around me and to have myself blocked in like that is pretty bad. It's bad enough that we're already, you know, into we so dependent on technology, whether it be TV, our phones and stuff like that. I don't want to have that extra step and that extra level of being dependent upon that. So me personally, I would not do it. I'd live normal and I'd be just like that whole clan over in Tokyo. That's just me. <laughs> the pure, the purest, as they like to call them. All right. Mm -hmm. What would you do? I'm not gonna lie. I'm 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 on the fence on both sides of this because <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it a hundred. Like at least for me, uh, for me I, I love the aspect of what that Tokyo, Japan after the you know the nuclear war or whatever it was. <clears throat> um, but in reality, I just saw that um, even in that aspect, the. The, one of the main people who was able to keep that place the way it was injected themselves with a serum that had nanotechnology. So I, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm like, man, let's do it. I mean, it's not going right? to, it, it's just, I, just, I think that's where it's at. It's, and, it's, and, and I think it's also really on the situation. Now, if it's just Ooh. everybody doing it just to do it, hell no. Now we're talking about survival. Um, people who got these super strength, super power, whatever it is. Then that's a different story. You got to play the, you got to level the playing field uh, the best you can See? because 
you can't you can't uh isolation that's not wakanda in this novel so they definitely their technology <laughs> was not it, was, it wasn't able for them to keep up to where that they could isolate themselves like that right. and not uh have the outside world as a threat so for me if it's to protect myself man just like you got when you got to get yourself you got to arm yourself with a, a with a gun and have it for you for protection <laughs> i'm the same way with the nano with the nanotechnology let's get it for protection okay. I love that. And I think, honestly, for me, just the fact that you can kind of push the boundaries of what your body can do, that to me is always very interesting about it, right? Like if you have the ability to, I don't know, fly or being able to kind of make yourself smaller or bigger, like I think that would be kind of cool, right? I mean, we we read comics where you have superheroes that can do that type of stuff, right? So, I mean, of course, you would say you like to use your strength for, for, for good, but I think it'd just be really cool to be like, I know what I couldn't do before, and now look what I can do. Like that to me just sounds pretty dope in my opinion. Right. And like in my opinion, I think that would be really cool to explore. But again, like you said, do you become dependent upon it? Because clearly in Dent's case, it seemed like he did. So do I want to mm -hmm. take a chance with trying to push the boundaries, but then end up having to be addicted to it? I don't know mm -hmm. if I want that. I don't know if I want that. That's that's something I'm not I'm not too comfortable with. Mm. But you know, we touched a little bit about this, right? Like this is how realistic is this tech dependent society, right? So we saw when Dent was driving around, he had all these shows up, right? Like all of these shows and, he, and it's like so many things that are popping up, right? And you have all these different stats that are popping up if it's scanning people and letting you know how happy they are and how sad they are with they're angry. Yep. And it's like all these things, you know, we're starting to tap into that a little bit now, right? Of oh, course we all have definitely. a cell phone, right? We all got a laptop. Clearly here we are all connected here. But I mean, like, how realistic do you think that we actually might get to that type of level of dependency, right? Like how, like to that point and how it was in the novel, what do you, what do you guys think about that? And I'm going to start with D on that one. Uh, I think we're already there. Uh, it's just not, <laughs> it's not just as that extreme, but I think it's, it has a lot of inclination or a lot of um, uh, comparisons to that world. I mean, social media people, I mean, let's not, let's not front, we're on our phones 24 7 like it's just like i, I mean <clears throat> our generation like the millennial generation and then the generation after us i don't know if that's gen z y but that generation under us is like it's it's just to a level because they grew up with it like i mean i remember like when computers became a thing like like when i mean at, in in home computers became a thing where you had the aol dial-up type of joint they were sending out the free 60 minutes 50 minute disc for you to get on so that you can use it. And even then that started this whole aspect of how it is in Tokyo ghost is just to a level that we haven't. I mean, I think that a lot of companies have not um, utilized that data yet, but every time we're on a phone, every time we're on a video camera, they're collecting every poignant aspect of our facial expressions, how we talk, our uh, mannerisms, everything. So, I think we're there. We're just they just haven't took it to where uh, uh, Flank Corporation uh, and Mr. Flank have taken it. Uh, but I still think that there's people like that who, who mm. will do it. Uh, and I think a lot of us will fall into it and it will be a lot. It'll, it'll be a lot more easier transition into that chaos than what a lot of people believe. Oh, I like that transition into chaos. Did you hear that? <laughs> oh, we yeah. know we're going to be getting that snippet. Definitely gonna get that snippet. <laughs> I uh, I agree with you one hundred percent on that, man. I honestly feel like we're there, we're getting out to that level, but we are there. We are hooked on our phones. We're hooked on our television, and more phones than anything. We're constantly in front of it. I ain't gonna even lie to you. When I wake up in the morning, one of the first things I do is check my phone, see if I had any missed calls or whatever. Yo, is that even a concern? Honestly, mm. so, yeah. you know what I mean. Like we we like we email are, and everything. Yeah, I feel you. I feel yeah, you. I, I do all that. So yeah, we're there. Uh, we haven't gotten to that level where we are producing that sort of waste. Where if you fall into the water, you're melting away. But we're producing toxic waste based upon a lot of different things. So we're we're there. We're not far behind it. Um, we're not, we don't have screens popping up in front of us virtually where we're, you know, able to walk or ride and stuff and it's sitting there. But the technology, I'm pretty sure it's available. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt about it. And just get nastier by the day. Man, you know, you you haven't you haven't lied. You two have not lied about that at all. I do think that. You know, I, I hope that with all of the media that's been coming out with movies, graphic novels, books that are trying to highlight the fact of how realistic and the, the dependency, how high that can be down the road, 
that maybe we're learning a few things, right? Like we're writing about it. Maybe it's a way for us to kind of not be so dependent upon it. But mm. I mean, I do think that we, and then when you think about our society, right? Technology has allowed us to move at a faster rate, right? So you're able to like how we are, we're all in different spots. D and I are both in California, but he's in North, I'm in the South and you're mm -hmm. on the East coast. But here we are being able to have this type of collective you know, discussion in real time with each other, right? So I was like, you know, mm -hmm. it, there's some benefits to it, to having some type of technology connectivity. But at the same time, like you said, we are dependent upon it. First thing you do, you wake up, you're checking your emails. Now, of course, home would say, well, you have to, because it's work. I got to make sure that I know what's happening for the day. But at the same time, it's like, do you really need to? Or mm -hmm. is this a false sense that they have been putting on us that we need to, to ensure that we keep our job? So it's the mm -hmm. same thing of like being in the office. The pandemic hit and it proved very, very successfully that you do not need to be in the office for a lot of jobs and for people to actually be more productive in their home than they would be at the office. Yeah. So I do think that there are some benefits to it. I, I'm excited to see this type of technology. I know there's some out there right now with like Google's talking about doing their Google Glasses. We can have that type of interface um, and they're starting to get into some of these type of things, which I think, again, would be really cool. They're already having technology that can project like keyboards and stuff and other types of things on other type of screens. But you do you do have to come to a point of how much is too much, right? Mm -hmm. Like when is it when is it enough? And so for mm -hmm. me, I think that that's a really interesting thing to kind of get into. But got to table that for another discussion. <laughs> oh, we, but, we get there. We, we're knocking down these questions, so we definitely going to have some. Yeah, we're going to have some time. <laughs> but this one here is the one I want to spend some time on. We are black nerds. And anybody who watches us who are black nerds, I, I really would love for you guys to chime in on this one and tell me when you think about and like in this in this in this series, in this in this in the different issues that we had covered, you know, I myself had noticed that there was a lack of diversity. Sure, they had some of the Asian characters that were in there. But besides that, I really didn't see too many other people that did not look what not non-white. Mm -hmm. And every time I've looked at, and I love futuristic type of stuff, whether it's novels or movies, but every time you watch those type of movies, you rarely see black people in the future. Let me say that again. You rarely see black people in the future in these different types of media that are being put out there. So for me, I just would love to know from you guys, how did you feel about the lack of diversity? And you know how we talk about this. We want to talk about the diversity on our end. And I really would like to know, you know, from, you know, from you, Mr. Refined, what did you think of that? Like, I'm, I'm curious. How did you feel about that? Um, to me, it's kind of sad that it, it, it appears normal. When you're looking at that, like if you're reading a book or watching yeah. a movie, that's the normal thing. But is that really normal? Nah, because we've been here since the beginning of time. We're the original man. So how is it that we are in the future and we're not there? It does, it's not adding up. I don't appreciate the fact that they don't have us in there, whether it be straight black or whether it be somebody with color that's in there. It's, it's just is lacking. They, they dropping a the ball in there. And it's kind of like a slap in the face because, again, a lot of these inventions, whether it be the cell phone, whether it be the Internet, whether it be the, the, the gun you might use or whatever you're drinking, liquor, beer, hint, hint, we've created right. that. But how is it that it's the future and now we're not here to be a part of all these things you partake in? It's not adding up to me. And as you always say, you see us in space and stuff like that, and then we're not in there. Everybody else is in there, but we're not in there. And if we are, it might be one person there. No, that's more of us than that. So I don't like the fact that they kept us out. So I'm just keep it right there because this could be a long discussion if we No, I want it to be. I mean, honestly, this is like the biggest question for me. It's like, because we, when you think about it as nerds, right? Like I, I really feel like there's not enough representation of us, right? Like there isn't. And we know for a fact that, you know, when you look at the statistics of black people who are going into STEM, there's more and more as the years go on. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand when you're thinking about future technology, whether it's biomedical engineering, engineering, you know, this hard, as they like to call them, hardcore sciences and biology, chemistry, why are we not seeing it? And so for me, when you think about Black Panther, I think it really pushed a boundary to say, look, here's a, a you know, of course, it's in the present day, but there is a, 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 in a, a society that is fully advanced, highly advanced, far beyond anywhere else in the world, and Thanks. it's nothing but Black people. Thanks. Like that to me was a great piece of representation, because when I read these other type of novels like this, I, I go, well, where are we? Did we just simply disappear 
or are we just not important to be covered in these type of like media? So like to me, it's like I always get so bent out of shape about it because like here I am in the STEM and I don't have that type of representation in my escapism or my escape art for me to be like, hey, there's someone who looks like me. Right. But let me pause there and give it to D because I know D going to be dropping some gems for me like he did last week. So oh, I'm going to give the floor I'm, to him. I'm, I'm, I mean, again, it is the it is the. The white man's media, how they portrayed us as less than since uh, enslavement around the world for a lot of people of African descent. Uh, even though it. we're the ones that grew all the food, we're the ones who knew how to actually do agriculture when <laughs> most of the people in the United States. I know, talks about that. Most of the white people in the United States, most of the white people, most of the British people and the, uh, you know, for real, Britain, like, let's keep it 100. Because you treat black people just the same way, you just, just be real bad. uppity about it and try Back. to be like, and, we, and we, Canada we don't do that here. <laughs> um, but reality, I mean, reality is, is that uh, if you just look at Star Wars and when they had the black guy whose name I, I can't remember the actor's name, but the way they they portrayed him was like he was a Jedi. He wasn't. <laughs> no. um, and then before the movie even came out, before the movie even came out, people were in uproar. That it was a black person. Whenever you see cosplay, a lot of the cosplayers, shout out to all the black women cosplayers, shout out to all the black male cosplayers. Hey, DragCon is going on yeah. right now. Dragon whenever, Con, yeah. whenever they do, whenever they do cosplay, it's like, well, that character is not black. And the thing is, really, what it boils down to is the narrative that again, white people are going to do stuff for white people. Anime again is coming is coming from Japan mostly. You have Korean anime. You have Korean comic books. Some of them I've looked at. Some of them are actually really good storylines. But again, they see who they're around and they do that. And whenever they bring in uh, black people, it's always um, outside of I think even I think Cowboy Bebop man have been a one that the black person didn't have the super big lips compared to everything else. But Dragon Ball Z, a lot of people talk about Mr. Popo mm. um, and, any, and any other black oh. character that just has big lips. I mean, let's 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 be honest. Whenever an anime shows black people, like one of the one of the one of the one of the biggest ones that a lot of people do cosplay of, because there's a black character that doesn't look like a character and is super strong. There's two uh, animes. One is uh, Naruto, and that is because you know, shout out to the Rokage. You know what I mean? The, and all the the village the village with all the black people. Uh, yes. Even though they did, even though they did have one one white woman that was, uh, I think, one of the right hand assassins or whatever, um, but majority of the group was black. And then shout out to Fire Force. I'm not. I just got back into Fire Force. But Fire Force has one of the one of the main villains, dude, the strongest shit. Like just hands yes. down, and every and it's right. just like he literally takes up the entire scene when he's on there. Like it's just a beautiful thing. And black people yearn for that because they like ourselves. They like anime. They like sci-fi. And, and really, it's an innate thing of of uh, going beyond uh, a limit, looking at the stars, all these things that uh, Mr. Refine was talking about as far as being the first of creating. And I know a lot of people, when they see this, oh, uh, here we go again with Black people saying that they're the first. I mean, again, yes. we came out, <laughs> yes. came out the continent known as, known, as, known as Africa. So even though we have our issues with racism, which is a racial, which is a construct, uh, every every being ancestor originated from the continent known as Africa. So Thanks. of course, yes. of course, you're going yes. to you're going we to have some rend rendition of what we currently have is like modern day technology or modern day whatever. It was already done. Nothing is new, as my mom always says. It's always it's Ain't just it's just new to us. <laughs> it's just See, new to us. And we find we find a different way to remix it as we're ooh. all as a species good to do because we build upon a foundation. That's why we always fo follow a path of success. That someone else, someone else has already laid, and it may not end the exact way, but then we build something different. That is what it. Yes. That is just what it is. It's foundational. So, it, I mean, I, I even wrote that down when I was reading um, uh, the comic, but I can't even talk about it. Because, or excuse me, the novel because it was in volume two. Um, but mm -hmm. there was no. <clears throat> I think in volume one there might have been one black woman, if I'm not mistaken. With Mr. Yeah. Flank, or maybe I didn't, maybe that wasn't, but no, nah. mm -hmm. nah, that wasn't. Now to think about it, no, it wasn't. So this nah. one was only in volume two, so I'm not going to speak on that because we're in volume one. Right, but right. It, it's it's just a it, for us is it's it, it, it's like we don't exist yet, and still you want to be you want to incorporate everything, such as hip hop. 
like hip hop being the biggest genre in the world now, undeniably, undeniably, because other cultures are using it and they're using it the way that a lot of when hip hop started was more so of like, damn, we can't even, you can't, you ain't gonna let us in this building. We can't have a party without the police coming and shutting us down. Exactly. Uh, Or we, or we don't have, we don't have the money to even rent the party out or or rent the, the facility out. And then we have all these rules and stringent aspects of it to get there. All of that around the world is happening now. A lot of the biggest hip hop artists around the world that are from different countries are the ones that are really like, uh, fuck the police in their own way, or talking about the just the devastation in their neighborhood from this crony capitalism, not true capitalism, because true capitalism, if you are the loser and you can't compete with the winner, the winner is going to win. That's not how that works. That's not how it works around the world. Um, it's just it, it just shows me that with black folks, we literally uh, like Paul Mooney said, RIP to Paul Mooney. Everybody want to be an N, but nobody want to be an N. Uh, everybody want to be a nigga, but no, don't nobody want to be a nigga. I didn't want to say it. Listen, I don't want to. I don't want to say it, but, you know, hey, hey, but Mister Refine, you know, he gonna drop that. He dropped so. it in. No, let's correct. So it. yeah, so I definitely, I just think that that's why it is, and everything we see, or we're always the one that that dies in the movie first. Um, oh my and, god, I was and, gonna say so in the most in the most it. gruesome in the most gruesome ways. Please uh, let me touch on that. Let me let me touch on that because I was I was so gonna say. I, I hate the fact that they're like, okay, well, we'll put you in there, but we'll kill you off quick. Mm-hmm. You're first to die, or like you said, it's in the most gruesome way. Like when you think about Deep Blue Sea, they're doing mm. research in the Deep Blue Sea. But how does Samuel L. Jackson get killed? You get what I'm saying? Like it's like <laughs> so like grab, smash, and yeah, then something stupid though. He's not. Why right? would I stand in front of the water and I know the sharks are killing? <laughs> Thank you. So he it was in stupid. And then the other way that I've seen it is like in the movie Life where you have a team of scientists who have gone out to space. They come mm. across this life form, they pull it on, to board, on board. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, first off, okay, you guys are not portraying scientists in the right way, mm-hmm. but we're going to leave it at that. But then they have it with a black guy, the only black guy on the entire team, that he goes in and is doing all these measurements on this creature, and the creature goes into like a sleep state, right? And he decides to electrocute it. Now mm. I'm thinking to myself, if you think about life in the most basic form, you would think it only knows a couple things. Attack, run, eat, procreate. That's mm. it. So you would know, you would think that if you get shocked, what are you gonna do? Attack. You're gonna get angry. Attack. You're gonna attack. So why would you have a black scientist? Scientists decide I'm gonna shock this thing. And then he ends up getting hurt and it's the first one to get killed off of that. So for me, I'm like every time I see that, we're either very marginalized, we're killed off very quickly. Or we're not there. And that, to me, just does not sit well with me when you think about the future. It's almost like they're trying to erase us completely. And I don't know if it is. And a lot of times you have to ask yourself, is this on purpose or is it because they know that this is going to sell? Yeah. Like, when you finish, I'm going to add to that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you have to save yourself. You know, is anyone really going to challenge the status quo? So this is why when you think about lost children of Adrana, what his, with his work that he's doing, it's nice that to see lost. futuristic type of stuff where we are represented. When you think about a lot of the black artists like out there who like TJ Sterling, who's doing some of the stuff, it's nice to see that we are being represented in a way that we are a part of the future. You cannot erase us because like you said, we started this, we will always be there. The Moors taught people how to wash, how, and we have been educated people on many of things, okay? Burring started out here in Africa. So like all these things that are a part of our society, black people have always been attached to it. So how can you not expect us to be a part of the future? That's the thing for me that I, I think that really bothers me the most. But like I said, before we move on to the next question, I'm going to give the floor back to you so you can add on to it. Because I know you got something to drop here. Listen, everything we do, somebody else wants to take credit for Boom. and wipe us out the picture. And I'm going to keep it kind of short and simple with that. We create so much shit. And there's no there's there's no uh sensor on this. Everybody <laughs> wants to take credit for things that we do. I don't care how minuscule it might be in their eyes. It's important, whether it be hip hop, whether it be science, whether it be education, Technology. whether it be uh, any sort of surgery or anything. We do a lot of stuff. We create a lot of things, but everybody else wants to take credit for it and then wipe us out as if they did it first. And this is going to continue until we as a people make ourselves known as one. As long as we are divided, they are able to do these things and pick us off. But if we have someone behind us 
meaning ourselves representing us at the UN, at these government tables, they won't be able to do it because there's other communities that they can't take things that they've created and say, oh, no, we're going to get credit off it because they don't want to deal with the flack and the bullshit that's going to come after it. We don't have that representation. So it's always going to happen to us until we, we represent Boom. ourselves, period. Boom. Love it. See, that's again, right. another another little snippet that I'm going to have to add. OK, because y'all today, I swear, <laughs> the fact that y'all are being so concise, but still back, dropping those impactful comments. Woo! I love mm -hmm. doing show another show. one, another one. Exactly. So here's my thing. We touched on it a little bit. D, you had said earlier that their relationship mm. is toxic. And we know this to the fullest. When you watch in the very first issue, when Deb says, I don't want to do this, but I got to do it. I'm sorry, baby. I got to inject you with this nanopack. You know what old dude about to go into and you still injecting him like you were hurting him to the point where it's like, I need us to get out of this. I'm sorry. Just a little hit. Just a little hit. So to me, it's like, <laughs> when you think about this, their relationship, Dent and Debbie, what would you guys say is the most toxic part of their relationship? What would you like? And when you think about it, I mean, we've all been in relationships. OK, and we, we all are currently in relationships. So when you think about it. What would you say is the most toxic part? And D, I'm going to throw it off to you because you had said that earlier. Thank you. I appreciate it, Dr. Suds. Um, yeah, I mean, just both yeah. of them and just both of them as people. <laughs> I mean, it's very, very simple. I mean, yes. they, they they grew up even even Mash, the character who I hate um, or despise, who when you got his backstory and the same thing with Deb and the same thing with Teddy, a.k.a. Led, um, they all came into the world where humanity was already or at least Los Angeles <laughs> of all places was all the nation of Los Angeles, not Los Angeles, the city, but the nation of Los Angeles mm -hmm. was completely taken over with just sitting down on the couch, like that Bruce Willis movie. And like, and they were in the pods and they literally just watched shows over and over again. I mean, they were all attached to things. They literally only got out literally like getting up to, to Led's uh, aspect when he talked about his dad getting up because the machine messed up he had to reboot that's the only <laughs> thing and he, and he really I, I mean none of their none of their relationship is anything built off of like truly liking a person for for mm. debbie's character it's wanting like she she even mentioned it and i wrote it down but i mean <laughs> i should have had it ready when you got to this question but with uh -huh. debbie she said on volume on oh, where's my where's my uh uh thing she she says notes. She loved, what did she say prepared. Man, she said something along the lines of like, oh, loving someone who didn't love her back and running and chasing them was like it was normal to her. And for yes. and when she met when she met Teddy, Teddy was already involved just like every other human in Los in Los Angeles, where he had the uh the nanopack, I mean the visor on. And this is probably before the nanopacks really got really huge, before Flank Industries went to that level um of technology. And he didn't even, he was like, hey, turn my show back on. And she okay. was, she was running it. She wanted somebody, she wanted somebody, she said she wanted somebody to love, but it really was, it was really somebody that was not ignoring her because they were trapped into technology. That's why she uh, didn't want any part of the nanopacks or any tech and nanotechnology in her body. Um, and for, and for, for lead, literally his aspect of not, uh, of being weak because literally with Debbie painted this picture for him that as long as you stay away from technology and explore the world and have all this fun, that life is going to be good. And then they yes. met, they met a, they met a conflict and the conflict were people who didn't think the same way that they thought and were involved in the society that the way society was already set up for technology to just run their lives completely. So he didn't deal with that aspect of weakness to not get stronger, but like, let me get, let me get revenge. It wasn't about, let me get stronger to protect as he so, uh, so vehemently says in volume one, it was about, let me just not hurt again because I was so embarrassed mm -hmm. and more so embarrassment than pain. I was so mm. embarrassed by the people yes. who were watching me get beat up on the technology <laughs> that I have, was told by Debbie no longer to be a part of. And got ridiculed about it every single day that yes. I just had enough and I never wanted to be ridiculed again. 
not Ooh. nothing to do with anything else. Not the hurt, not the pain, not I couldn't protect Debbie. It was just I don't want to be ridiculed. So Ooh. their relationship is two people who don't even the, who who love each other because of a need to not want to be alone and had and it did grow to a point where it was some type of love because they spent time together. But even then. With that, it took Tokyo for them to really deal with their reality and oh. sit down and probably have a conversation as a as, each as new people, as people yes. who change, as we all do. And they yes. literally had a heart to heart about how they actually truly felt. And that yes. was something where the relationship, at least there, was not toxic because they were dealing with themselves first, but talking to each other about who they were as a person. So they were looking in the mirror and then yes. they were telling their their the the their partner this is how I feel. And this is what I went through. And this is what makes me feel this way. And they I felt safe to have that conversation because without, besides that, they were in a society that was either be uh, killed or be killed, take advantage of, or not take advantage of survive or die. So I that's that. how I feel. I, love that. I absolutely love Yo, that. <laughs> he, he said a mouthful. I can't really <laughs> add on to that. Yeah. You get what <laughs> I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? My brother, he took all that. He took all that and, and put it out there. Um, he just, he just piled it all. <laughs> yeah. He pretty much, they were both very toxic for each other. Like D said, they relied upon each other. And I'm going to say more of anything, Debbie relied upon him because when she first met him, he wasn't even concerned with her at all. Mm. So once that happened, an introduction happened and he got exposed to being put on as one of the people being watched in this fake reality show that caused him to do what he does. And then here she is later on, um, controlling and manipulating him. Okay. Now I'm about to get attacked by, what was his mm -hmm. name? Uh, the crazy Davey. guy, Davey. Davey. Yeah. Davey. So Davey, Davey over there, he's about to attack and then she uses him. Okay. Just one more time, take this drug mm -hmm. and you'll be good to protect me. So they were definitely toxic for each other and it continued through the rest of the story. Even, even after he got clean, it was still some toxicity there and it was a, it was a sad thing, but it is what it is. Mm. You know, and I, I gotta say, you know, honestly, the biggest thing for me, like you said, she, they both were toxic, right? But there was a level of codependency that I think she screams in this, right? Like this, this idea that she's like, without him, what am I supposed to do? And you have to say to yourself, and this is part of the reason why I had another question about, you know, about Dent later on. It's just when you think about how he was responding throughout the, the different issues, you have to say to yourself, who cared more about who? Mm. Right? And even though she came off like she really cared about him, and she's like, we need to go to Tokyo. We need to get out of here. We need to go to that garden. We need to detox. I'm here for you, baby. I'm always here for you. Don't forget mm. your memories. But at the same time, I need to inject you with this because we're getting fucked up. Like, that was a thing for me. Like, you knew, you knew where he was going to go. But because you you guys kept going into these situations, you already knew what your fail sick was going to be. Inject. Every single time. And so you were okay with keeping yourself pure. But you're putting this man into the situation over and over again where he's clearly constantly being eroded like his mental faculties are being eroded every time you inject that man mm. every single time and so you have to ask yourself and you know they always have that kind that, that that quote i came across i was looking up love quotes i thought this one that i thought was really interesting it's like if you want to be in love be prepared to be hurt and i do not like that sentiment because it's like regardless of how much you guys evolve as people how much you try to work at it as a relationship there's always going to be some type of hurt. So just be prepared for it. Be willing to deal with it. And, you know, you hear a lot of people. We've seen this, right? So you guys both are in long-term relationships. And you see this idea where they talk about, oh, we see all these people who were married back in the day who have been married for years. And they mm. never split. But now marriage is like a, a kind of a far-fetching thing. And divorce is at an all-time high. People don't want to put in the work. And it's like, no. People back then, when you think about it from a woman's perspective, and I know we mm. brought me on for this, from a woman's Let's perspective, we, we didn't have the opportunity to just get up and leave. A lot of times mm. you had to still have your husband sign off on you getting a bank account. Sign off on you getting a abortion. Sign off on you. All kinds of stuff. But I mean, like even a medical procedure. But go ahead. Say, right. I'm, I'm and that's what I'm saying. Like, 
they go to your husband and say, uh -oh. hey, is it okay if I get this done? Like, you know, and like if he is one of those type of people who's like, I don't think you need to get that done. You don't need mm. to have that type of power. Mm. You don't need to know this. She's stuck. So she has to stay with him. She has no other place to go. And now you have women who have the ability to make their own decisions about their health, to make their own decisions about having a career, when to have kids, what to do in life, buy property, own a business. And you telling me that I think that I should just be sitting here trying to put up with emotional or physical or verbal abuse? No, I'm not going to stay in that situation. I don't care if we've only been married for a year. You were showing those signs before, but now you are. You're controlling. I'm not having that. I'm not going to stay in this situation because I don't need you in that regard. What I need you for is for that emotional support. What I need you is as a partner in life, not to sit here and help me get through these hardships or financial parts. Right. So for me, it's like, you know, when you look at what she was doing to him, she was like, well, I need him to help me get out of this. And it's like, but you are also a badass bounty hunter. Do you really need to put him through this just to get out of the situation? Maybe think your plan through a little bit better so you don't have him get to a point where he's just like the Hulk and he has no no rhyme or reason to what he's doing. So to me, it was like they're just so toxic for each other. And I don't know if he really cares about her in that way. Like he cares about her, but not in the same way that she's like, I need you. Like that's how it came off to me. But mm. you know, I'll, I'll before I go on to the next question, is there anything you guys want to add to that? You know, I want to throw said? something in there. I was gonna you say, know, I will. Refine, I will. you want to go in there first? Are you are you good? Oh, you're drinking. You right, said, no, you go ahead. ahead. <laughs> and I'm because hey, I'm looking at the time, so I want to be real quick. So a couple yeah, just a yeah. few things to knock to, this, to the bullet points. One. When they say uh, you're going to be pain, uh, it's going to be pain. Love is you got to be ready to get hurt. Reality is, is that you got to look at yourself and say, what it is, what is it that I want and that I can't change this person to do what it is that I want them to do. They got to be willing to grow to your point. They got to be willing to go through. It's not hard. It's, it's to go through two disagreements with two people, because no matter what you want somebody to, to do, they are their own person. And that's why right. relationships are currently are the way they are the relationships in the past again trying to keep quickly kick these bullet points so i don't take up too much time the relationships in the past is that a lot of the times women are like i really don't care what that man is doing because i got to focus on not just the children but focus on the money taking care of the kids because a lot of men and women at the at that time especially men were drinking the money away they were out there uh slutting it up so they were spending money they was having 20 different families <laughs> and all living in the same neighborhood so they was broke as a joke and a lot of these women were just making sure to maintain the household, even though we don't think, quote unquote, they had power. It was really a lot more power than what, what they do, because women keep the families together because they know how right. to organize naturally. That's just hands down facts. So lastly, with their relationship, again, you're, you're talking about two people who don't know who, the, who they are to themselves. And because they haven't had any loving, guiding they didn't have anything that could show them like, this is how you grow as a person and, 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 and be right for you. This is how you love yourself first before you say you love somebody else. So Ooh. I just Ooh. Wanted... did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? John? <laughs> Dang, I saw he be throwing these little zingers out there at the end. So for the sake of time, I know we talked <laughs> about this offline a little bit, but to me, I was like, you know what? We're talking about love. And we all love music on here. What song would you say captures their love story perfectly? And I am going to go with Mr. Refine here. Oh, I gotta, right. I gotta bring, I gotta show off what D is showing that graphic. Yeah, I was trying to show, I was trying to show OT. I was trying to show OT. He asked what, what kind of Yeah, I know. We I told him we're going to educate him. Tokyo we Ghost Volume One, and we haven't read Volume Two yet, but you go ahead and cop that one too, man. You'll like it. Go ahead. Yeah. So, 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 Mr. Refine, what would you say is their love okay. song? I got two of them. My first one was Prince, I Would Die For You. Yes. Um, and my <laughs> second one is actually Sade. I love her. That's my my crush. Anyways, Sade, um, No Ordinary Love. Definitely No Ordinary Love. Mm. So that's my thoughts on that. Ooh, okay. All right. All right. So let me let me get this set up. So D, what would you say? Man, I was I didn't I didn't even uh, pick. No, I picked one. It just took me a while. <laughs> man, I'm doing that Adele. Hello from the other, other side. side. That's the song for me, man. Because I was like, that's exactly what it was to tell you I'm sorry for the pain that I caused. <laughs> and that's exactly. I was like, man, that's it. That's it. 
like because their relationship when I was reading it, because I, I was listening to y'all when we was doing our when I was texting back and forth, I was like, this ain't no yes. damn love story. This is a bunch <laughs> of abuse and usage. And one person just zoned out to the point that they don't even realize that they they don't even realize Ooh. what they do. Oh, you know what? So I, I originally what I told you guys in the beginning was Sade, is it a crime? Because she's saying to him, I love you. Don't you understand how much I love you? My love is like as wide as the ocean, as tall as the mountains. But then I talked to a friend, okay? And they said, to me, this reminds me of the Dolly Parton song, Jolene. And I said, <laughs> oh, because she's asking him, she's asking the woman, hey, can you stop? Because you really are affecting this. And I thought, damn, Debbie is saying that to the drug. Like, I need you, but at the same time, I need you to go away. Like that to me made me stop and go, damn, you know what? Maybe in a second, when, you know, what Dee was saying, like when you think about it, you know, they really were not a good match for each other. They just weren't. It was very abusive. She was causing his erosion and mm. he was like, it is what it is, babe. Like, I mean, it's great having some time. Let me get fun back to these streets. Let me get, me get back to these streets. You get what I'm saying? I need to get back let me to get my back show. In these I need to keep get back to running people over, like all this stuff, right? So for me, it was like, you know what, you're right. It is, it it is somewhat of a love story in the sense of, you know, do you know, in the sense of, you know, it's there's some there's some feelings there, but it's not in the sense of what an actual true healthy love is. So I gotta agree with you on that, D. I don't think that was like a, a good a good love story whatsoever. But you know, as we're coming down to the last few minutes, I mean, we know what happens at the end. So when you guys read this, I really want you guys to understand that we are going to give a little bit of a spoiler on this question. But, you know, at this point, Dent, you know, they were getting attacked by those those uh, the, the ninjas that were coming in. Because, by like mash, you said, like ninja. you said, <laughs> yeah, by MASH, they were, they were ninjas. OK, but like you were saying, Mr. Refined, in the sense of, you know, um, you know, they were coming back for revenge. D, you had also had tinted at this as well. So they were coming back to say, hey, we don't like you getting back at us. So we need to show you who's boss. And so he had to take the nano pack again after he had gone sober. He jones. They had this whole story, you know, whole storyline about this. Right. Mm. So like when he took that and we saw what happened with Debbie when the bomb went off and we don't know what happens to her. The last thing he sees is this bomb going off and he knows that she's there and he's also in this rage psychosis. Do you believe that Dent is forever lost at this point? And mm. I'm going to go with D at this point because I really want I really want you to kind of go into what you think. And he already opened up his next beer on this one. So I'm already on my fourth, I'm already on my fourth beer. You know, shout out to ABC, the uh, art beer and community. Your boy's on the can right way at the bottom over there. So check me I'm out. I'm on there too. I'm on there yeah, too. I know you are. Oh, no, I got it. Where says over there somewhere? I saw her. Oh, there you go. No, yeah, that says right there up there in the top. There we one. go. Um, <laughs> Now, real quick, because I, I don't want to take too much time, because I want to make sure we get to the hour right a little bit after, so we don't go crazy. Um, right. I don't think that Dent is lost because, again, there's two different people. There's Dent and there's Teddy, and that Teddy is Ooh. Teddy is in Teddy is in a he isolated himself because he just doesn't want to feel weakness. And that the events that happened in Tokyo again, he had the opportunity to think of a plan. He had an opportunity of, to use his brain and and to do something different but yet and still the situation and what what occurred in tokyo japan just was like well there's really no way out because i'm only seen in this one shape way or form i'm seen as the monster i'm um i'm going through a lot of pain and agony so i'm gonna take this and I just, i'm sorry dad but i gotta do this and the reality was that i mean he he doesn't have like to debbie's point even though he's a grown man, he's still a child in the mind. And that is a, and that was facts. And he is not, he doesn't know how to deal with hardship because he doesn't want to feel pain or feel weakness. He wants mm. to be, he wants to be numb to everything and just mm. only present really. Teddy only comes out really when he's, when he is hurting the people that hurt him. Ooh. And that's, and that's Ooh, I love that. All right. Mr. <laughs> Refine, what you got to follow up on that? Um, I agree with him again, uh, but I will say this. I'm going to say I believe he's forever lost. My reason mm. why is when she first met him again, he was hooked on that show. He was like, hey, what are you doing? Are you taking my stuff from in front of me. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Now he got to go back to that nano pack. He got that pack again. You know what I mean? He had to go get them blue tops. <laughs> he had the Jones. He had the James <laughs> yeah, Jones, and he was tops. like, "Oh no!" <laughs> he went back to that pack. He's back hooked in, and then he had old Davy Boy who survived mm-hmm. talking in his mm-hmm. ear. Listen, you can do this. Go ahead, do that. Go ahead, do that. I Thank think he lost. He was brought up into it. He's raised off it, and he's hooked on it. So, me personally, watching the experience between him and 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 Debbie. I think that he thought she might be gone. He's feeling oh, rage. Yeah. He's feeling a whole bunch of emotions. He was like, listen, just one last time, not to mention he was already injured. So now these injuries are gone because he took the drugs. It's over for him. He lost. That's just my opinion. You know what? I, I got to agree with you wholeheartedly on that. I'm not going to expand into too much, but I do think that she like she she tried to say, well, he, he could still be there if he turns and he misses me when she was saying there in a way. Mm-hmm. You can miss a person like, hey, okay, I'm going to not hit you because I know who you are. But he was so focused on his mission that he didn't even stop. He kept going with what he was doing. That, to me, says he is gone. Like He's like, I respect Mm -hmm. you because we've had spent so much time together, but I'm past you at this point. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, he was running back towards her when he saw that the bomb was going off. But I think in his mind, if he thinks that she's truly gone, he's like, there's nothing here to tether me to reality. I don't care. There's no one here to try and keep pulling me back to who I was. So why should I hold on to that piece? I need to move forward in this area of being rage and killing everybody that I can who keeps getting in my way. So to me, I don't think he, I think he's forever gone in my honest opinion. But yeah. last question here before we wrap it up here is what do you think the future holds for these two? And I'm, mm. I'm going to start it off because I think honestly for these two, there's a couple of different ways they could do it. A way that they set it up, it does seem like Debbie would be coming back because she did inject herself right beforehand. So that would lead you to think that she might come back because she had the nanotechnology in her. But I thought, what if the writer really wants to mess with you and say she doesn't come back? Mm. What then? So now he doesn't have that person who takes him back or tethers him to the past. He doesn't have that person who's going to tether him to a time when he got abused and felt inferior. He now is in this state of, I'm always going to be like this. I'm always going to be jacked. I'm always going to be plugged in. So there's so many things they could do with him, but I think it's going to be very one focus in the sense of him being really rage induced. Now, if she does come back, it would be interesting to see if she's able to kind of heal him from this. But at Mm. the same time, I think there's going to have to be a very strong challenge between these two where he's going to say to her, why should I? We have never been happy. I've never felt happy or comfortable with myself. Mm-hmm. Why should I come back? You haven't done anything. Like you, you can't give me any good reason as to why I should do it. Now, the only thing she can pull from this is her is their time in Japan or in Tokyo Russia. when they were in the secluded garden. But other than that, I don't know. I don't know. So D, I'm gonna let you go ahead and start off first. Yeah, you think I already started reading volume two, so I can't even <laughs> lie. But uh, you can't, you can't give an honest answer. Right? On but I mean. I think um, even volume two doesn't give you everything, but I think there's going to be whether um, Debbie um, from volume one is in volume two or not. I think Teddy is going to have to deal with Teddy and it's really not about Debbie. (laughs) I mean, yeah, I I, I mean, even though, even though it's called Tokyo ghost and we can kind of, uh, kind of, you can kind of get an inclination after you read volume one or why called, they called it Tokyo ghost. Um, it's really about what will Teddy do? Because, I mean, I really think Teddy is going to have to either deal with himself, the attic aspect of himself, and it may come out to a point that Flank Corporation is not the only corporation that they got to worry about. Ooh, I like where you're going with that. I think you're also hinting at some stuff that's happening in Volume 2, but Mr. Refine, me and you haven't read Volume 2. Throwing some things out there. Yeah, I ain't we read, haven't read Volume, volume 2, two so... I'm, I'm getting it, so I'm going to say your this. Virgin ex- your version uh, <laughs> response I, to that? I think, I think they're both going to be to, together. Maybe not together again as a couple, but I think they're going to be headstrong and focused on what they focus on. Um, Teddy, a.k.a. Den, is going to be more trying to get revenge and payback because in his mind, he feels his woman is gone or he thinks his woman is gone. Um, he's also back on the juice, which he's always been hooked on. And then you add in on the opposite side, uh, Debbie, who's now took the uh, drug that actually, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kozima, Kozima Kizumi, Sensei. Kizumi. Kazumi Sensei took. So mm-hmm. she has those same abilities. And I think they're both going to be on their own missions 
to to do something in the future, not realizing that the other counterpart is together. And at some point they're going to meet together and they're going to converge, but shoot, they'll both be looking at each other like, oh shit, you made it? Like, what you doing here? And that's going to kind of give it a little bit of twist because they both focus on rage and or payback at this moment because first off, Debbie saved a little boy, Takara, mm -hmm. and now she has to have him to raise because she's trying to live in this model under uh, the sensei. But then yeah. you also, again, on the other opposite side, you have Dent who is going through his own issues and is payback, payback, payback. And in his mind, physically, I believe he's always still 12, 13 years old whenever he got his ass whooped. He's yeah. still physically, mentally in that state. So he's always going to be focused on payback. And that's just. I love that. I love that. So the last yeah. thing I want to bring up, because that was the last of the questions that we wanted to go over on this. If you guys have not read this, I would totally, totally recommend reading Tokyo Ghost. It is available on Amazon in both paperback and in Kindle format. So definitely check that out. But I wanted to give you guys a little preview because next up. I mean, we're going into another because the theme, again, is transhumanism. I want you guys to know that we are going to be talking about a classic here. And I got to give Mr. Refine a little bit of heat because he hasn't watched this just yet. But it is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Okay, that is a series that is highly regarded amongst many people who are into any type of anime. I think it's a really great job of trying to understand how do you enhance yourself with alchemy and following these two brothers that are trying to bring their beloved mother back. So, like I said, I want you guys to know what we're going to be talking about covering next. But if you guys have not, make sure you follow us on Facebook, on Twitch, on, on, on YouTube, on Instagram. Make sure you hit the notification button. Make sure you share this. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you check us out next week. We are here every Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Always check us out. We are always here. I just want to give a shout out to my co-hosts, D. Neal and Mr. Refine, a.k.a. Ren, who have provided such a great commentary on this. I appreciate you guys to the fullest. And thank you so much you for go. sharing this moment hey, with me on my birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Let's That's get our it. That's a beer right here. Hey, hey, look, look. So <laughs> I, I got somebody locked in. It's Freddie right here, but they locked in. They locked in that <laughs> nano pack right now. They're watching TV, so it's over. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys Happy for birthday. everyone who followed, who was watching in, who chatted in there in the comments. Thank you so much for anyone who's going to watch a replay. Definitely hit us up with any questions or comments that you guys got. We look forward to it. And we will see you all next week. Thank you all again. D, Mr. Refine, you guys got anything to say before we get off? Any plugs you want to put out there? Just let me know before Man, I hit you know, the hey, end broadcast. Go, go, watch, go watch the Black Bearded Nerd reviews. Go check them out on YouTube. He's ready. Boom. After all the reviews, uh, go go watch Kinky Says, Dr. Says. Uh, go watch all her uh, IGTV episodes. You know, check out my YouTube, Beer Talk Now. Check, Boom. you know, you already on this one, so you know what it is. It's yeah, you know, it's Black Nerd Fridays, man. We for the nerds. Let's get it. All the black nerds. All the Fact. all the people of color nerds too. But you know, we black. People so we of color, black we got, nerds, we, anybody. Yeah, we got just, nerds we just got to it up because we black. So we just keeping there one hundred. And, and make on. sure I get some of that strong L that comes out in a couple. You oh, definitely brother. will. Don't you worry about that. And listen, so, we, we got to work it out. So you already know what it is. Yo, I got you. I got you. Subscribe. <laughs> Thank y'all for stopping by. And again, happy birthday to Doctor Suss. Put some respect on the name. Peace, you guys. Have a good night. Have a great weekend. Bye, you guys. <laughs>